what is critical race theory? I mean, there's so much controversy around it right now, right? I mean, I, I saw like I was in McDonald's in Eastern Oregon <laughs> driving to Idaho and I saw this car with a bumper sticker that was like ban CRT. And I was like, dang, it's on bumper stickers in McDonald's? Like what's going on? So what, what the heck is critical race theory? Yeah, that's a great question, Abby. And I know once it hits the bumper stickers, it's kind of game on, I guess, from there. So the, the best place to start really with CRT is to think about it historically. I think that's how I like to go about it. So really what you're dealing with is legal scholars um, in the 70s and the 80s who are looking at race, racism, um, relationships of power, but in a legal context. So you're seeing it, so someone like Derek Bell, who's a sort of a pivotal player in this movement, um, they're looking at race in it's more of an academic thing in journals. So you have like the Yale Review, the Har Harvard Review, things like that. And essentially, these scholars sort of begin with a critique of liberalism, a critique of um, how race is understood in practice and policy and in law. And so they're really looking at it from the standpoint of, okay, we have Plessy versus Ferguson. We have the separate but equal cases. We have Brown versus the Board of Education, which folks like Thurgood Marshall, um, a black Supreme Court justice uh, figure, and of course, Derek Bell, who, who sort of trained under and with him, who are basically saying like, you know, these changes in the law haven't resulted in changes on the ground. So what you'll hear a lot in these circles is something like a, a legal realism. Hmm. Um, and this is this idea that, you know, you hear this um, in certain postmodern circles, it's like sort of the, you have, say, a phenomenon, so that which appears in the culture, but then how are these words used? What's the reality like with communities? And the critique was, is like, look, if we are to stick with our example of Brown versus the board is, hey, look, racism hasn't gone away. It's sort of been repackaged so we have the privatization of school so for those lovers of the blind side and movies like that that's really kind of a microcosm of what occurred right so in the 60s and the 70s in the american south you have this emergence of private school education that can continue to hold the segregation policies mm -hmm. and laws but they they're protected by the sort of private privatization of schools and then, of course, you have, um, it's probably, you know, the busing system. So I have a lot of friends, my family members who live, who lived in L.A., say, during the 70s and the 80s, where all of a sudden, if you were living in South Central L.A., Crenshaw, you know, so predominantly Black areas, you were going to be bused into, say, Granada Hills or the Valley Schools, Kennedy, these kinds of schools. So hmm. they really wanted to argue that. And, and meaning liberal, they're not necessarily meaning liberal and sort of conservative. They mean sort of this idea of the majority view of politics that says we can sort of move to a sort of colorblind approach and we can make laws and things that um, essentially kind of racism will kind of just go away if we make these sort of moves. So critical race theory emerges in that context. And obviously on like the dollar ninety eight version um, that I like to say is it's really a system of scholars and thinkers and activists who are interested in the transformation of race, racism, and power, um, particularly, but not always, in the United States. Mm -hmm. 